Hello, my name is Patrick and I'd like to give you an overall introduction into what SAS Boys Airplane is and show you some of its greatest features. And in its basic form, it is a code repository that can be used as a starter for any web application that needs both front-end and back-end. The front-end side is written in TypeScript and React, while back-end side is written in Python and Django. But the unique thing about SAS Boilerplate is that it also comes in with a ready infrastructure managed by AWS CloudFormation. You're able to deploy it directly to your AWS account by running a couple of simple scripts and this gives your team an ability to focus on business value features more quickly instead of some staple basics. Additionally, for free, you're getting a CI-CD pipeline that automatically deploys your application to a specific environment, QA, staging, or even production. This way, you're able to test and verify your features frequently, which from our experience reduces time to market a lot. Let's quickly have a look at the architecture of SaaS Boilerplate. It's built out of a number of various components, a React frontend app, a Django backend and admin panel to manage uh, the database content, and asynchronous workers that are serverless functions triggered through an event bridge messages. And the best way to understand all of this is by looking at the system architecture diagram. And the very first thing that is worth mentioning is of course the frontend. Uh, it's deployed uh, to a simple S3 bucket and it is connected as an origin to a CloudFront distribution. Uh, CloudFront distribution is a CDN, uh, so you can see uh, this gives you maximum performance. And the second part, which is of course uh, as equally important, is the backend API. It is consumed on the front-end side and it's deployed to Elastic Container Service utilizing Fargate technology. This means that you don't have to manage any servers. The only thing you need to specify is the number of instances of the app you want to be running. Of course, it's also possible to configure automatic scaling based on some custom metrics such as uh, CPU utilization. And another important component is asynchronous workers. They are serverless functions triggered by an event bridge messages, which are usually dispatched from the backend API. It's great for an asynchronous job such as uh, dispatching emails or some communication to third-party API, which needs to be rerun when failed. All of this can be easily deployed through continuous integration pipeline implemented with AWS code pipeline. In the first stage, the whole app is tested, uh, then built and labeled with specific version, and finally deployed using the very same CDK scripts, which are available on your local machine. All of the deployments happen simultaneously, so it's very quick and it's possible to set them up automatically for every commit pushed to the repository. Next, let's take a look at actual features implemented in SAS Boilerplate from the user's perspective. And uh, one of the most obvious ones is login and registration. Uh, by default, we su support standard email and password combination, as well as social logins through Facebook and Google. Uh, we use Django social app library, so it's very simple to add any other identity providers. And it's also worth mentioning that typical scenarios like validation or password reset are also supported out of the box. And I already created an account for myself uh, for the sake of the demonstration. So I'll use that to log into the app. And here you can see the home screen, which is fully configurable to your needs. The whole application is written in React, so you can place anything in here, any React component that you want. Uh, let's go to the profile screen. Uh, we add a couple of typical fields, such as first and last name, but it's very simple to add more to both backend and front end side. And the form itself is implemented according to best practices related to working with forms in React. 
and anyone who had a pleasure to implement similar features will appreciate the work we put into this. One of the big features in SAS boilerplate is payments. Uh, they are implemented with Stripe and we both support simple one-time and recurring payments. This screen demonstrates how to pay using your credit card. Uh, we decided it would be a good idea to present this feature in the form of donations. You can buy some fake 5, 10 or 15 dollar items and Stripe prepared some fake credit cards that we can use to simulate successful payments. So I'll use it now, use my name, uh, the number of the card, and pay $15. We can now find this transaction in a transaction history, uh, which for the demo purposes resides in the subscription screen. Uh, let's see the transaction history. You can see the $15 donation in here. And uh, almost all of the SaaS platforms need some form of subscriptions. This is a, a huge feature to implement for any dev team so we decided to do it for you. From this screen, I'm able to change the subscription uh, to a different tier, cancel it whatsoever. Uh, I'm able to change a default payment method uh, used to, to pay for said subscription, change a card to something else. Uh, also, free trials are supported and you are able to control the length uh, of this uh, free trial through a simple environmental variable. We handled a lot of edge cases, such as allowing you to control the duration that the user is given to set up a valid payment method after the default one fails. Uh, another thing uh, from different category, which is very useful for developers, is that we added an integration with Contentful uh, CMS that uses GraphQL API. If there is any dynamic content that needs to be edited after you're able to do so immediately. And this one has additionally a favorite button, uh, which demonstrates uh, how a contentful item can be also referenced from a primary SQL database. This is of course only a demo of a connection that is meant to show developers how to use it. You can create and modify components like this to your heart's content. And uh, another one quite similar, but is it demo of a typical CRUD, so create, retrieve, under, update and delete. And it shows your developers how to communicate with backend API through the GraphQL. Uh, you're able to, to, as I mentioned, like create uh, a new item, modify it. Uh, you're able to view it, of course, and uh, delete if, if, uh, if needed. Uh, we also included a generator script to quickly gen generate components like this uh, with different names and types uh, that communicate with the backend and this certainly simplifies work a lot. Uh, every app needs some static pages like privacy policy or terms and conditions. So it goes without saying that they are present in SAS boilerplate. Uh, by default, those are written in Markdown so you're able to easily give styling options to your editors. Uh, last but not least, we added a file upload and download mechanism as this is uh, something that most of our clients request. Uh, you can upload a file in here, you can uh, download a file in here. Let me quickly show you how this works. Uh, press on the, on the drop zone, select my, my photo and as you can see it has been uploaded. I'm able to to press it to find it, but oh, here I am. I believe now it would be a good idea to check out the administration panel. Uh, the very first thing that we need to do, of course, is to log in. Uh, it's the very same account you can use to log into the regular app, but with an additional admiral. For example, my account already has an admin role, so I'm able to use the same uh, email, same password to get into the, into the, the administration panel. Uh, this is Django admin, so you're able to automatically generate all of the pages you'll find here for every database model. Uh, they offer all crude operations, so for example, it's uh, very easy to list all the users that exist in the system. It's very easy to create new ones. 
uh, specify email, password and all of the profile values and just hit save, you will be having a new user. Uh, you're able to delete existing users and uh, modify the existing ones uh, by, for example, adding them new roles, new groups. Uh, you can also filter by properties. You can add additional filters. You're able to search by name, by whatever field you actually add in here. And it's, uh, believe me, very simple to do so. We're also able to find a payment transaction that we made earlier and check all of its details. So let's try to do it. Uh, charges, you can see 15 USD uh, as we paid uh, for a donation. Uh, you can find, for example, to prove that this is me, uh, a customer, which was my email used to log into the uh, prison. Uh, on top, there's also a button which can take you to the Stripe console where you can review additional information. So uh, all of this is, uh, as you can say, connected to Stripe. Finally, since this is a code repository, I would like to give you a quick tour around its contents. And uh, from the top, uh, you can see that there is um, already some basic workflows for GitHub implemented, as well as Bitbucket pipelines. Uh, those are necessary for continuous integration and continuous deployment. Uh, then we have some documentation uh, in the form of a docuseros application. You can start it and view all of the necessary documentation required for your devs to work with SaaS boilerplate. Uh, there, is the, there are descriptions on how to add stuff, how to remove features, uh, how to launch deployments, uh, everything so your devs won't uh, be confused about uh, SaaS boilerplate. Uh, there is also configuration for Cypress and end-to-end -end tests. Uh, by default, we test all of the features included in SaaS Boilerplate. You're able to do uh, more to, to implement uh, tests for your own features. Uh, you don't have to spend time on configuring this. This is also run uh, on continuous integration pipeline. Uh, next is infrastructure uh, written in CDK. Uh, in TypeScript, uh, as you can see, anything that we mentioned in a system architecture diagram is configured through CDK uh, in separate stacks deployed uh, through two different commands. Uh, next, uh, services. Services contain backend, web app, workers, as well as a service required for documentation to be deployed publicly if you, if you need uh, something like this. And some, some tools uh, additional, like for example, managing uh, environment of variables through uh, remote panel. Uh, everything is based on Make. Uh, so there are a lot of Make files. All of the comments that I mentioned previously are uh, implemented through Make, so uh, it's very easy to navigate between them. For example, if I want to log in into AWS session um, in my terminal, I can run Make AWS Vault and select a stage in an environment that I would like to log into. In this case, this is QA. So quickly, I input my password and here I am uh, inside AWS session. So now I'll be able to run some AWS uh, comments such as check get color identity. As you can see, uh, I was able to successfully log in. Of course, there is a make comment to build the whole application. There is a make comment to deploy the whole application. You can check them all out in makefile. So for example, deploy env, infra, uh, env app would mean that I deploy uh, this currently built version of the application to the specified environment. In my case, this would be QA. 
Uh, each of the services mentioned also have their own make files to run some, some uh, service specific uh, comments such as migration or generating migration files in backend. Uh, there is also a secrets comment which allows you to edit uh, some secret values inside AWS for specific environment. Uh, there's a lot of things that you, you can do in here. Uh, similarly to, to web app, there is a main file which allows you to, uh, to install some uh, requirements, to uh, test the application, to build the application and many, many more things. All of the services have a deploy, uh, a deploy role in, in Makefile. This allows you to both deploy the app from your local machine and uh, from continuous integration worker in code pipeline. Uh, the same command is used both on local machine and in remote uh, worker. Thank you for viewing this short introduction. Of course, if there are any questions from your side, if you need more in-depth uh, tool around SaaS boilerplate, just contact us. We'll be happy to uh, give you some more details.